Okay, so now that we have solved the Laplace equation on a disk, it's time to think about what this all means. Let me begin by getting rid of a lot of this and make a little room. Okay, good. All right, so back to the Laplace equation. Remember that we came up with this really cool solution. U of r theta um, is going to be a constant, which I'm going to call c0, plus a sum, sum of little bits that vary with r and theta. Okay, so we end up with a cn cosine of n theta plus dn sine of n theta. There we go. And of course, um, by this time you've all worked out what the coefficient should be. So for instance, you know that c0 um, is going to be 1 over 2 pi. Now think about it, what should it be, right? minus pi to pi f of theta d theta okay and the other folks same thing okay cn is going to be now we got that little a to the n bit there so minus a so a to the minus n divided by pi integral from minus pi to pi okay f of theta cosine n theta d theta and dn is going to be a to the minus n over pi integral from minus pi to pi f of theta sine n theta d theta okay so now we have a complete solution if you tell me f I can tell you what these coefficients are and I can write down the answer so that's fantastic okay now there's some really interesting implications to all of this. So for instance, uh, if I want to know what the solution is at r equals zero, okay, well, theta doesn't really matter if r equals zero. That's just an artifact of the polar coordinate system, but I'll put theta in there. Look at what happens. Okay, so if r equals zero, all of this stuff goes away. Okay, so then I just have C0. C0 is this bit. So, look at that. That's amazing. So what it tells me is that at the center of the disk, the temperature is the average of the boundary. That's a rather remarkable result. It's kind of what you would think, but it's still remarkable, okay, in the sense, all right. Um, in fact, okay, uh, you can um, you can extend this more and you can say that, uh, th so you can you can uh, rescale the problem and, and say in fact that um, that uh, if I have a disk of, of area A, another way to think about this is that this is equal to 1 over 2 pi a um, times the path integral of f and here instead of parametrizing f in theta I'm going to parametrize a path around the outside of the disk I'm going to have a circle of radius A. So that CA 
is the parametric path that goes around the outside of radius A. So these two expressions mean exactly the same thing. So here I'm integrating in theta. Theta is my parameter that goes around the end. Or I can think of this as a path integral for math 243 days. And so I'm, I'm integrating f as I walk around the path. And sx and sx and sy are the, the values of x and y as I go around. So this is a different function. So this is f as a function of Cartesian coordinates as I go all the way around. And then dl is the little arc length unit. So, it does, you know, think about it one way or the other. What it's saying is, is that the value in the middle is the average of the values on the boundary. Okay, and that's a very powerful statement. We talked about the maximum modulus idea before. So, maximum value principle here. And what that's really telling you um, is that, all right, if, if, um, if you have a solution to the Laplace equation, okay, the maximum value of u occurs on the boundary. So if uh, del squared u equals 0, u achieves its maximum on the boundary of the domain. Now that's a pretty amazing idea. It's a really amazing idea. Okay, and how can we see that? Well, certainly it's true on a disk, right? Because the, um, uh, well, actually, it's not certainly true on a disk. Okay, all we can see here on the disk, right, is that, uh, is that uh, the, um, the value in the middle is, uh, is the average of the values around the edge, okay? Um, which, which tells you that the middle can't be the maximum, right? So that's, that's fine. But, uh, but let's go ahead and play this game a little more. So suppose I have some crazy, wacky domain here. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, that happens when I'm drawing. Okay. And, um, and let's suppose I have a point here that is a maximum of u. I'll call it m. So let's say I have a point inside the domain and del squared of u equals zero inside and I know u on the boundary and suppose I have a maximum that's on the inside well if I have a maximum that's on the inside oops what just happened um, okay uh, let me change colors here then uh, if I have a maximum on the inside then I could in fact put a little circle around uh, around my maximum okay now I don't know what the solution to u is, but, but u has a solution. And I can think of this red area here as being its own little Laplace problem, right? Um, so I'm going to take that and take it over here. Okay, oops. All right, we're losing control of our pen a little bit. Sorry, I'm just, just losing control of things here. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, um, there we go. Okay. So, um, if I go ahead and I write this, write, whoops, sorry. Okay. If I write this problem down here, now I've got... A disk and it has size um, epsilon I don't know what epsilon is it's whatever uh, whatever size I, I have there now just the important thing to know is that I have some boundary conditions here I don't know uh, you know whatever they are they come from you okay so so you has a solution 
it's got some, so I take whatever value u has in here and I stick it on my boundary here. Now I go ahead and I solve the Laplace equation inside here because it's a solution. So I'm just taking my scissors and cutting this out, putting it here. The boundary conditions are whatever the solution was in there. And you can see that it is impossible for m to be a maximum because if I examine just this little subproblem, I know that the solution at m is the average of these solutions on the boundary. But m was a maximum, so how can the maximum be the average on the boundary? It can't, right? At best, the boundary is constant and m is equal to the value on the, on the boundary. But, but if, the if the values of u on the boundary vary at all, then m is somewhere in the middle, right? It's, it's the mean, okay? So it's impossible for this to be a maximum, for this value here to be greater than the values on the edge, okay? And that argument applies for every point in the domain. So what you conclude, okay, so we will conclude it is impossible, impossible inconceivable okay. uh, for there to be a maximum in the interior. Okay. Now I'm going to leave it to you um, to prove that the same thing is true for a minimum. But in fact it is also true uh, that it is impossible for there to be a minimum in the interior. So therefore if I have a solution to the Laplace equation um, it achieves its maximum and its minimum values on the boundary. And that is really cool.